Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and I'm really excited for this tutorial because I'm about to show you a Lightroom technique I just came across that blew my flipping mind and I think just might change your life at least a little bit. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in and start editing right away here, but first off, credit where credit is due. I came across this technique from Aaron over at Flurn. He's an amazing editor, touch-up artist, whatever you call those people. He works in Photoshop, does tons of cool tutorials. So if you are interested in Photoshop, definitely check his channel out. Now let's jump in and start editing together. So this technique is basically a variation of the classic dodge and burn technique when you're editing a photo, whether it's in Lightroom, Photoshop, any program whatsoever. What we're going to do is take a local adjustment brush, my adjustment brush right here. We're going to take the exposure and maybe put it up, oh, I don't know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And the old school way of doing this is you're just going to look for areas of highlights in your image and you're going to brush those to bring basically eh, exaggerate, amplify the effect that's going on. So what we're doing is we're shaping her face we can kind of exaggerate these cheekbones here, this area above her lips, on her chin. I know this might not be new to you. Hold on if you have already seen this before. But I need to show you so you can see exactly how powerful this is. So the idea behind dodging and burning is basically uh, just playing with light, shaping a person's face or a photo. It doesn't have to be a portrait. You can do this with landscapes as well. You can exaggerate certain rock formations. You know, if you've got a mountain, we can go in here. We can grab our exposure, bring it up, and watch. I'm just going to take the areas of highlight on these rocks and we're just going to add a little bit of extra exposure to them. So we can go in here, just follow the areas of highlight with our brush and of course I'm doing this quickly so it's not going to be anywhere near perfection. But you can see it's a really quick technical Technool. It's a really quick technique for just kind of adding extra contrast to your images in a selective and artistic way. So this looks absolute rubbish. I would definitely need to dial it back, right, so it's more subtle. But you can see before and after. And if we do that combining with burning, which is darkening our image, we can really start to get some cool effects. So we can just bring more texture out of the image and do it in a really natural way. Way better than you could do if you just made a contrast adjustment to your image. Now, this is not the actual technique. The trick that is going to blow your mind is you can do this in a way that is far more effective than manually doing it with your mouse the way that I just did. And it's going to be uh, just less obtrusive, less obvious, less um, edited looking essentially, and it's going to do it in a way that's way faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our range mask. We're going to grab our adjustment brush. We're going to brush all over this image, okay? You don't have to be super careful about it. I'm going to turn my flow all the way up. Okay. I've basically brushed all over this model right here, okay? Now, as I take my exposure up, obviously, I'm going to brighten everything in the image, including the darks. But if we take our range mask tool, and we go to luminance, and we grab this range, and we take it up uh, maybe around 75, whatever. We can just kind of gauge it by the photo. Take our smoothness up a little bit. You'll be able to see that now we're only really affecting the highlighted areas of the image. Let me change this a little bit so you can actually see what's going on. So the areas in green are being affected. The areas that are not, they're not being affected. So now what we can do is we can selectively add exposure to our highlights. Perfect. So you can see just with one brush, bam, we can do all of that dodging and burning, well, at least the dodging, uh, with one brush. Now we take this technique one step further. We're going to grab this adjustment brush. I've made a new one. I'm going to do the same exact thing, only this time we're going to go for a darkening effect. We're going to grab our range mask, go to luminance. We're going to take the range all the way down so that it's only the dark parts of the image that are being affected. Maybe bring our smoothness up a little bit. We can show our mask so we can see what's going on. So only the dark parts are being affected, and now we can make them selectively darker or lighter. Now this is more powerful than you think, because although obviously that is a pretty cool effect, you can see before, and after we've really added pop to the image in a super easy, fast, quick way, we can use this in ways that are kind of even more creative than necessarily just dodging and burning. So what you might notice, if we go to our dodge tool, and I show the luminance mask, you can see what's being affected. Okay, you'll notice that the areas that are being brightened in the image are basically just her skin, uh, parts of her hair that have natural highlights in them, areas that don't really need a lot of sharpness. So what we can do is we can actually take our texture down on her skin, maybe lower the contrast a little bit, and smooth her skin out. So again, here's before, and here's after. We've brightened it, and we've smoothed it in a super, super quick process. Now we can do the same thing 
with our shadows here. And the areas of the shadows are her eyes, her eyebrows, her eyelashes, uh, these areas around the edges of her lips, her hair. That's really an area that we'd like to exaggerate the detail. So we can take the texture. Let's go way overboard for the sake of this example. Maybe add a little bit of dehaze. Maybe even add a little bit of sharpening. And you'll see that super simply, we can add a lot of pop and interest to our image in a very selective, creative way. So here's before and here's after. And if I wasn't talking and explaining that, it would have been a lot faster still. So let's jump over to another portrait, show you another quick example here. This is something you have to try for yourself. It's going to blow your mind how awesome it is. Okay, first I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit on this photo because it's slightly overexposed to begin with. We're going to take our range mask, set this to luminance, take that luminance value, and we're going to take the range down so we're only affecting the shadows, right? We can take those shadows down a little bit, add some contrast, add some texture, maybe a little clarity, some dehaze. We're just going to do this super, super fast so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, get rid of the clarity. I don't know if it's just me, but clarity just never never works. It always fights me. Anyways, and then we're going to go again, do the same thing, but this time we're going to set our range mask up. Luminance, grab that bad boy, take it up to maybe 75%. And I should say, if I'm going too fast for you, you can feel free to slow this video down using shift and the comma key on your keyboard, or shift and period will speed me up if for whatever reason I'm going too slow. Anyways, we're going to take our contrast down, take our clarity down, take our texture down and then take our overall exposure back up. Maybe take our highlights down a little bit so we're not going to blow anything out. And you can see that here's before and after. Now in this particular photo, I actually liked her skin a lot better before, so I might not go quite so harsh on the shadow area. We'll just grab that, take that right back up. Maybe take the texture back down. And we could apply this more selectively so we go through and we'd add some dodging and burning just to her eyebrows and to her eyelashes. Of course, this is still a very fast process I'm doing. I'm not taking my time here. Just add a little bit of contrast, a little texture. Shabam, we've got before and after. No presets, no real time spent on this photo, but we've really made some significant progress with a super simple quick trick. Okay, I'm going to skip that photo, head to a landscape photo for you right now, and show you this same technique. We'll reset this. Okay, I'm going to grab my brush, and we'll just do this mountain here. We won't focus on the rest of the image, because probably we're going to need different adjustments for different parts of the image. I'm going to do my range mask right here. Stumbling on my words, grab the range, take it the opposite way, down into the shadows only. We're going to add some contrast, add some texture, maybe a little bit of clarity. That's probably too much, so we'll dial it back. Okay, and then we're going to go show a luminance mask so we can see how much we're affecting. I might actually take the smoothness up and then take our range and turn it down slightly so we're not affecting quite so much of that. Okay, reveal that mask, and here's before and after. So we've really just added some pop to those rocks quite easily. We'll do the same thing. We will grab another range mask, and we will brush on those rocks, add some exposure, take our range mask luminance up. Also, you can hear my dog sipping water in the background. So if you're wondering what that sound is, that's what it is. Got to stay hydrated. Okay, and we're just going to take our exposure. Oh, we got the sky, obviously, a little bit. So we're going to erase our brush on there. We could even use our auto mask to erase the brush. Erase the brush. Erase that mask from the sky. Okay. Dial that in. Okay, so we're going to... Take our contrast back up, maybe add some texture here too. Maybe exaggerate the highlights a little bit. And you can see you have such a nice selective way of adding pop to your images before and after. Now I would still, this is for the sake of a tutorial, I'm not going to take too, too much time here. Obviously I've still got some, some mask here on the sky that I would have to take care of so that this effect doesn't go completely crazy. But you can see really quickly and simply, reset, before, and after, we're able to do amazing things with our image in a way that would have taken a long time to do manually. As I showed you before, you could go through. It's very possible to go through and manually find all of the highlights in the image and just exaggerate them, bring them up a little bit. And you'd have to zoom way in and just follow the contours of the rock here. So I would brighten this part, and then I would go in with another brush, and I would darken this part. Yes, I'm on task. Thank you for asking. And I would do this over the course of, you know, 10, 20, 
30 minutes just getting things perfect and right. And I think you sh there's still room to do that. There's still room to go in and where you don't have a tool that does it for you, um, take your time and you'll get great results. And it's a really, really great practice to do when it comes to just learning to observe light and getting better at kind of figuring out where light is and what looks good and what doesn't. It's a great technique to practice. However, this will get you amazing results, especially with detailed images like this one or with portraits where you're not exactly sure where to dodge and burn. It'll just be a lot more of a kind of transparent edit as opposed to when you try and brush it by yourself. Um, your computer's just you're pretty good at picking up the details when you use this lum luminance mask, okay? So, here is before and after. Again, we've got before and after. I didn't do this one <laughs> before and after. So, really powerful technique. I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up for me. Give me a like, a subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below. Makes a big, big difference, and I really appreciate it. So, if this was helpful, please do that for me. If you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure to let me know. I'm definitely always looking for requests. We'll take this last photo and go through it together. I will take a brand new range mask. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll just brush on her. Actually, we could brush on everything. Why not? Let's do the whole image. Go crazy. Go to the range mask, luminance. We're going to just affect our shadows in this one. Perfect. Something like that. Do another one and just affect the highlights here. Highlights up, range mask on. Drag that sucker up. And obviously, I don't want to take uh, this highlight on her cheek that's blowing things out. I want to take the highlights down maybe a little bit. I don't want to push things too far. Or I could selectively just erase from this mask. So I'll let the range mask do a lot of the work, but where I don't want it to affect, I can just erase out of there, which is essentially just those two hot spots on her. Okay. And again, we can go back to our shadow mask, whichever one that was, this one right here. And we can add some texture in those areas and some contrast in those areas. Maybe a little bit of dehaze. Perfect, something like that. So here's before and after. Really does an amazing job at just bringing out details, adding pop to the image in a supernatural way, super, super quickly. I can't tell you how handy this is for me. I'm really excited about this technique. I hope you are too. Again, if this was helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button, smash the subscribe for more great content and tutorials and resources, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.